Hello everyone, in this video we will solve a system of three equations in four variables using gauss jordan elimination. Along the way, we will also learn how to set up the augmented matrix for a system and how to carry it to rho echelon and reduce rho echelon form. First, we need to represent a given system with an augmented matrix. To construct such an augmented matrix, we create a coefficient matrix from the coefficients of the variables in the system as well as a constant matrix from the constants on the right-hand side of the equations. Note that the first column contains the coefficient of x1, the second column contains the coefficient of x2, and so on, so forth. On the right-hand side, we will have the matrix of constant of the equations. The matrix on the left is called the coefficient matrix, and the matrix on the right is called the constant matrix. Now, if you combine these two matrices into one, the resulting matrix is called the augmented matrix. Notice that this matrix has exactly the same information as the original system. The coefficients from one equation of the system create one row of the augmented matrix. Next, through a systemic procedure of row operations, we will simplify the augmented matrix and carry it to row echelon and reduce row echelon forms and find the solution of the system. Note that the elementary row operations used on an augmented matrix will not change the solution to the corresponding system of equations. We begin with the augmented matrix in its original form. Starting from the left, we find the first non-zero column. In this example, all columns are non-zero and thus the first column is the first pivot column. And the position at top of this column, which is negative three, is the first pivot position or lean entry of row one. The first step is to create a one in the upper left corner. So we multiply the first row by one over negative three. This number one is called the leading one of the first row. Then we use this leading one to create zeros in the other positions in that first column. In this case, there are two twos. This is done through row operations using the first row which is the row that contains this leading one. So we need to take two times the first row and subtract it from the second row and also the third row to make both twos zero. First, the first two. Two times row one is obtained by multiplying each entry of row one by two. For subtracting rows, we simply subtract their corresponding entries. This is now the new row two and will replace the original row two. Next, we repeat the last step and subtract two times the first row from the third row to make the other two zero. This completes the work on column one. We now move to the second column. The first entry of row two in this column is zero. Therefore, we skip column two and move to column three where the lean entry of row two is non-zero. In this case, three. Similar to the previous step, we first make this number one by multiplying row two by one over three. Now this is the leading one of second row. Next, we use this leading one to create zero in the entry below it, which in this case is six. This is done by subtracting six times row two from row three. This completes the work on column three. Since the last row is all zero, there won't be any leading one in row three. Note that the resulting matrix has this staircase form where leading entries of non-zero rows are one and they proceed down and to the right through the matrix. Also, all entries below and to the left of leading ones are zero. The matrix in such a form is called rho echelon form. The rho echelon form matrix can be converted back to a system of equation and solve by back substitution. In this example though, we carry the matrix to reduce rho echelon form and then we'll obtain the solution. To carry the matrix to reduce rho echelon form, we need to use further row operations to create zeros above each leading one as well, beginning from the bottom right or the leading one of row two. So we use row operation using row two to make the entry above the leading one of row two zero. This completes the work on column three. Note that in the resulting matrix, all entries below and above each leading ones are zeros. This matrix is called reduce row echelon form. Next, we convert back the reduce row echelon form matrix to the system of equations. Observe that the system corresponding to the reduce row echelon form has two equations in four variables. Since the number of equations is less than the variables, the solution will be parametric. 
meaning that there will be parameters in the solution and that the system has infinitely many solutions. Let us go back to the reduced row echelon metrics. The variables corresponding to the columns that have leading ones are called leading variables. In this case, x1 and x3. On the other hand, variables x2 and x4 that their corresponding columns do not have a leading one are called non-leading variables or free variables. They are called free variables as they are not restrained by any equation and can get any number. It is customary to label the free variables by new variables, for example, s, t, w, which are referred to as parameters. Now, letting x2 and x4 be represented by s and t, respectively, we will use the equations in the system to solve for the leading variables in terms of s and t. Putting x1, x2, x3, x4 together, we get the general solution. All the variables are given in terms of parameters s and t, where s and t are arbitrary real numbers. Therefore, for any value of s and t we select, x1, x2, x3, and x4 will be given by these equations. For example, if you select both s and t to be 0, one solution will be x1 equals 2, x2 equals 0, x3 equals 1, and x4 equals 0. Or, if you select s to be 0 and t equals 1, another solution will be x1 equals 1, x2 equals 0, x3 equals 3, and x4 equals 1. Therefore, this system has infinitely many solutions. Thanks for watching.